A couple of y'all was informing me about this story right here, and I think Lovely T did a video about it too, but I didn't pay attention to it. I just saw the name Sweetie Pies in her title, but I never watched it. And um, but I knew who she was talking about when she when I saw the title of it. And let me tell you something right now. This story right here is so grimy that I can't even put this person in the D and U category. Because what he did wasn't necessarily so much as dumb, but it was very vindictive and wicked. And whatever happens to this guy deserves to happen to him. Now, I never watched the show Welcome to Sweetie Pies, but I have heard of it. Um, many of you have heard about it as well. Now, this guy right here, his name is Tim Norman. He is the son to the woman who owns the owns the establishment that was known as Sweetie Pies. And to my knowledge, he has had some run-ins with the law before in the past for other things. I know he did a bid um, for a few years as well for previous charges. And then I know he has some incidents going on with the mother of his child and everything like that. But this right here, which has just come out, this eclipses everything that he has done before this. So I'm going to give, you know what, I'm not even going to last, but just a lot of eyebrows right now. Because it's like, how in the, what did you do? I already heard what one of my people told me saying that he possibly or he most likely or he did set up his own nephew to get murdered. Now, I don't know how true that is, but we're going to find out because, like I said, this is my first time reading this article. Welcome to Sweetie Pie star and producer James Timothy Norman has been arrested on federal charges stemming from the 2016 killing of his nephew, 18 year old Andre Montgomery. Norman, age 41, who starred in the popular own reality series with his mother and family, was charged with conspiracy to use interstate commerce facilities, a cell phone, in the commission of a murder for hire resulting in the death resulting in death in WAPT reports. The reality star was charged by a federal complaint on August 11th and arrested on Tuesday in Jackson, Mississippi. He is being held in the Madison County Det Detention Center. Federal authorities claim that in 2014, Norman secured a $450,000 life insurance policy on his teenage nephew, making himself the sole beneficiary. According to the complaint, Norman is believed to have conspired with an exotic dancer named Tarika Ellis, as well as others, to set up Montgomery to be murdered. That is as wild as it gets. You did all of that for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Like they say, whenever someone goes off to that after that insurance policy. And mind you, he was 18 at the time. So this guy did this for money. He conspired to have his nephew killed for four hundred, um, almost a half a million dollars. That is, that is crazy. In the days leading up to his death, Ellis residing in Memphis, Tennessee, communicated with Montgomery that she planned to meet him in St. Louis. On March 13, 2016, the day before Montgomery's murder, Norman allegedly also flew to St. Louis from his home in Los Angeles. The following day, Ellis and Norman allegedly used temporary phones to communicate with each other as well as to track Montgomery's whereabouts. Immediately after learning of his location, Ellis placed a phone call to Norman. By 8 p.m., Montgomery, who was featured on Welcome to Sweetie Pies before his passing, was shot and killed. In the days following the murder, Ellis deposited over $9,000 in cash into various bank accounts. One week later, Norman is said to have contacted the life insurance company in an attempt to collect on the policy he obtained on his nephew. The St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department Homicide Section and FBI are investigating the current charges. That... That's as low down as you can get. Like, this guy did all of that. Now, they're saying allegedly. Now, I know what they're saying allegedly. But. That. I I, I usually not a at a loss for words most of the time. But I, I am right now. Like, this guy is no good. 
Like you set your own nephew up, your own flesh and blood to secure money. Like that's all he was worth to him. And then hired, what was this, a stripper to help set it all up. He's he probably found out how much was in that life insurance policy. He got greedy and knew that the only way that he could get it was with his nephew being deceased. Like that's the only way you can collect on the life insurance policy of your next of kin. Because realize, like they said in the article, he couldn't wait to make himself the sole beneficiary of it. When nine times out of ten, he probably wasn't. Now I'm not gonna say he was if he wasn't, but let's just say that he that he was. Not right now. It's not like, the, as far as I know, I don't think the boy had any illnesses or anything like that. But that didn't matter. All he saw was dollar signs. But see, this is what greed does to people. This is what greed will do to you. Now, mind you, like I said, this guy already did a bid in jail. And I think this was actually, the bid was done before this happened. That's crazy. Man, and I feel I feel bad for his mother, you know, the one that people really know for the show. That would be the boy's grandmother. I believe this is the grandmother. That that's messed up. That is messed up. Well, if he is found to be guilty, like if they have proof that he did do this and it looks like they do because they have his name. They have him signed off on all these things. They have him saying he's a sole beneficiary. They said they show that he has this money. They show that the money was distributed in various bank accounts. So it's not all in one place. And we know why they do that, because they don't want to leave a paper trail. You know, they wouldn't think, oh, OK, it's just a coincidence that, you know, all this money is in one account. Oh, let's just split it up in all these other accounts so they can't really trace it or they can't track it. And then all of a sudden, his nephew ends up dead. But he didn't do it. He had it set up where the stripper was somehow involved. And I hope they get her, too, because she played a part. His was just a bigger part because he orchestrated this, which means if they do find him guilty of anything, this will definitely be upgraded to first degree because it was this was planned. It was premeditated. But I offer my condolences to his nephew and everything like that. Now, like I said, I never watched the show. I never watched it. So there could have been stories that could have come out before in the past talking about the nephew being killed, but no one knew what the reasoning was or knew who was behind it, only to find out four years later that the person who was behind it was right underneath their nose the entire time. So I had to come back and add this little piece of information. It's literally just a couple minutes after I had stopped recording. And it's a good thing I went and checked my notifications for the comments left because the person who left the comment on the, a video talking about this had left something else that I didn't know about. And this is not about him, but it's about the nephew. So apparently they said that the nephew had a reputation or something like that. Um... And I don't know if he was maybe mixed up in a gang or something like that or anything gang affiliated. And this is all alleged. But if that is the case, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to claim that the people who killed him was in a gang, maybe some type of retaliation or, or something like that. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was if that is what was the case. They let that run on for so long. I'm talking about four years ago. This guy right here knew what he did, and he was willing most likely to take, have someone else take the blame uh, for it, which makes this even more dirtier.